Hello, welcome to the course SJPHY1C01 Properties of Matter and Thermodynamics. The contents of today's lecture is taken from Heat and Thermodynamics by Brijlal and Subramanian. We will continue to discuss topics from Module 3 Thermodynamics. In the last class, we discussed about entropy change during a reversible process where we have seen that entropy remains a constant and change in entropy is zero. But let's see what is the entropy change during an irreversible process. Consider a heat engine working in irreversible cycles where the working substance absorbs heat Q1 from the source at temperature T1 and rejects heat Q2 to the sink at temperature T2. The efficiency of the irreversible heat engine eta I is given by work done q1 minus q2 divided by heat absorbed q1 which is 1 minus q2 divided by q1. From the Carnot theorem we know that efficiency of a reversible engine is always greater than the efficiency of an irreversible engine. So the, the efficiency eta i we have derived just now is going to be less than the efficiency of a reversible engine eta r working between the same two temperature and we know the definition for eta r this is going to be 1 minus t2 divided by t1 so from Carnot theorem i can write eta i efficiency of the reversible engine is less than eta r efficiency of the reversible engine substitute for eta i and eta r you get 1 minus q2 by q1 is less than 1 minus t2 by t1 or q2 by q1 is greater than t2 by t1. If you interchange the diagonal terms, you get q2 by t2 is greater than q1 by t1. In other words, q2 by t2 minus q1 by t1 is greater than 0. Now, what is the physical meaning of this equation? So, if you look at the entire system, the source is losing heat energy, right? In other words, source loses entropy by an amount Q1 by T1. Sink is gaining heat energy, so consequently, sink gains entropy by an amount Q2 by T2. So, what's the net change in entropy? This is going to be the total gain Q2 by T2 minus the total loss Q1 by T1. And we know that this is greater than zero. So, the net change in entropy is positive. In other words, entropy increases during an irreversible process. So we have derived this result for the specific case of a Carnot engine. Let's see whether this is true for any general irreversible process. So let's take another example. You have a hot body maintained at a higher temperature T1 and a cold body maintained at a lower temperature T2. When you bring these two in thermal contact, heat is going to flow from the hot body to the cold body. And let's say Q is the amount of heat which is transferred between these two. And we know that this is an irreversible process for sure because heat flows only in one direction from hot body to the cold body. Because according to second law, the reverse flow is not possible. Okay, so this is an irreversible process. Now let's see what is the entropy change during this process. The hot body is losing heat by an amount q so the decrease in entropy of the hot body is going to be q divided by t1 the cold body gains heat by an amount q so the increase in entropy of the cold body is q divided by t2 and what's the net change in entropy ds is going to be the total gain minus total loss which is q by t2 minus q by t1 but we know that T1 is greater than T2, so Q by T2 is going to be greater than Q by T1. So you get change in entropy it is once again greater than 0. So let's conclude that for any irreversible process, the entropy of the system always increases. Since all natural processes occurring in this universe are irreversible, we can say entropy of the universe always increases. So ds universe is always greater than zero. This is known as principle of increase of entropy. So to summarize, 
if you have a reversible process, the total change in entropy is going to be zero. On the other hand, if you have an irreversible process, the net change in entropy is going to be greater than zero. So using this understanding, Clausius redefined the second law from the perspective of entropy. So he said, for all the processes taking place in an isolated system, entropy of the system either increases or remains a constant. Right? The process has to be either reversible or irreversible. In both cases, either it increases or it remains a constant. The next question is, what is the connection between entropy and energy of a system? So once again, let's take the case of a Carnot engine. So we have a Carnot engine working between a hot reservoir or a source temperature T1 and a cold reservoir or sink at temperature T2. Let Q be the amount of heat energy available at temperature T1. And efficiency eta equal to work divided by heat absorbed or you can write work equal to efficiency into heat energy substitute for efficiency you get 1 minus t2 divided by t1 into q when we introduce the concept of a Carnot engine i have said that uh, the working of a Carnot engine is based on few assumptions basically Carnot engine is in a hypothetical machine so it's based on a few assumptions. One of the important assumptions is that there is no friction or mechanical imperfections in a corner engine. But in reality, if you use any practical heat engine, there is going to be friction and other top types of contact forces. So when heat is transferred between the source and the cylinder, part of the energy is invariably lost through radiation or dissipation etc. So whenever you have two surfaces which are in contact, the friction between them is going to create a loss in energy in terms of heat dissipation. Similarly, you have heat loss into the surrounding medium in the form of radiation. So these are inevitable in any practical heat engine. So since we are losing a part of the heat energy, the actual temperature T1 prime is going to be less than the theoretical temperature T1. So the actual work done W prime is going to be 1 minus T2 divided by T1 prime into Q. Now, since we know that T1 is greater than T1 prime, when you substitute it in these two equations, you will get W is greater than W prime. So there is a difference in work done, right? Or W minus W prime, this is going to be greater than zero, right? So you have uh, assume that you have certain energy which is available for doing work, but you are losing a part of that energy, right? So the loss in available energy is going to be W minus W prime. So substitute for W and W prime, you get 1 minus T2 by T1 into Q minus 1 minus T2 divided by T1 prime into Q. You simplify this, you get Q divided by T1 prime minus Q divided by T1 into T2. So Q divided by T1 prime, you call it as S1 prime and Q divided by T1, you call it as S1. Since T1 prime is less than T1, Q divided by T1 prime is going to be greater than Q divided by T1. In other words, S1 prime minus S1 is going to be greater than zero. So the net change in entropy is positive. In other words, there is a gain in entropy. So let's put things into perspective. The loss of available energy is equal to gain in entropy multiplied by temperature T2. So if you take T2 as a constant, you can write loss of available energy is proportional to gain in entropy. So as entropy of the system increases, its available energy 
by available energy what i mean is energy available for doing useful work so when entropy of the system increases its available energy decreases or i can say unavailability of energy increases that's why entropy is defined as a system's thermal energy per unit temperature that is unavailable for doing useful work so since uh, the available energy decreases when entropy increases kelvin proposed that available energy of the universe tends to be zero when its entropy is maximum this is known as principle of degradation of energy now coming to the obvious question what is the connection between entropy and disorder now, if you take any thermodynamic system so it consists of atoms and molecules and these atoms or molecules are not stationary they are always moved so and the, the movement is quite random especially if you take a system of gas molecules you will find that the gas molecules are always moving in all sorts of random directions now the movement it depends heavily on temperature so when you increase temperature you see that the motion is increasing proportionally okay and this is because the kinetic energy of the molecule half mv square is proportional to temperature and the relation is kbt equal to half mv square where the proportionality constant kb is known as boltzmann constant so from this you can easily make out when temperature increases the kinetic energy of the atoms or molecules increases consequently their velocity is also going to increase so when temperature t equal to zero the velocity of the molecules are zero so all molecules are still so this is the perfect arrangement of atoms and molecules at absolute zero but when you increase the temperature you will see that the molecules start moving and if you keep increasing the temperature you find that the molecules move faster and farther so since these movements are related to temperature these are essentially thermal agitation so whenever you provide heat energy to a system the thermal agitation is going to increase and we also know that when we provide heat energy to a system its entropy increases so when you connect these two you can say when entropy of a system increases the thermal agitation of its molecules increases so when the thermal agitation of the molecule increases the disorder in the system increases so in other words when you increase entropy the disorder in the system is going to increase now from the previous discussion we know that entropy is a measure of energy unavailable for doing useful work usually work is associated with ordered molecular motion suppose you apply a force all the molecules are going to move in the direction of the force so force multiplied by displacement you get the corresponding work done so work is obtained from ordered molecular motion so when i say energy unavailable for doing useful work basically i am talking about energy which is used up in disordered molecular motion that's why entropy is considered as a measure of molecular disorder or randomness of a system and what's the direct relation between entropy and disorder according to freeman dyson these two parameters can be correlated using an empirical relation so this is not based on any strong theory this is purely based on empirical observation entropy s equal to kb log omega where omega is the disorder parameter and kb as i said before is the boltzmann constant whose value is 1.38 into 10 to the power minus 23 joule per kelvin so from this equation it's very clear when the disorder parameter omega increases the entropy is going to increase so that's for today thank you